Hi everyone, welcome to As Finola How, episode 10. This is a very, very interesting, well, I say this about all of the Ask Finola How episodes, just because I find all this so interesting anyway, but it's interesting because it's very topical at the moment with my clients because they're asking me lots of questions. And in fact, we got a question this morning. So let me tell you again, Ask Finola How, episode 10, grow up or scale up, are you ready for change? Okay, such a really good question. And it uh, lies at the heart of all the work that I do and lies at the heart of the Get Strategic course as well. And because it's this whole idea that growth is a choice or scaling is a choice and really consciously understanding that you need to know the path that lies ahead. Now, we've spent several episodes talking about purpose, mission, vision, all of that kind of stuff. And you will note from each of these episodes that I return here quite a lot. And today, this is the reason why. We need to be anchored in our purpose, anchored in what we envisage for ourselves in the future, because here is the inalienable truth for you. The you that started this business is not the you that will get you there. And that's often scary. That's often the scary part of success. And I've had this conversation with so many people over the years. And, I've, and I always come back to this quote that says, um, the price of the new life is the old one. So something must change at each stage in the growth of the business because the you that got you here is not the you that will get you there, okay? And let me share with you a question that got shared with me this morning, perfectly in time for today's session. And it's this, because they were very interested in the topic. They're not the only ones. I get this all the time. And this question says, I'm always thinking that I want to grow the business, but then what does that look like? Full-time work, all the time, managing people, etc. Sometimes I think I'm just happy plodding along. Is that bad? And of course that's not bad because that's your business and that's your choice. But what I'd like to throw out at you is there is this conventional belief that you either have a lifestyle business. I hear this, I've heard this for years, consultants or advisors talking about, well, is it a lifestyle business you have now? Or, and also what's wrong with that? And, or is it that you hustle, 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 you burn out, you sacrifice, you sacrifice in the short term, you hope it's the short term, and you burn out and you work hard and you manage people and it breaks your heart and it's just so hard. And these seem to be conventionally the two options. And what I would like to propose to you is, why can't we do something else that marries both? That we consciously understand that we want to choose our way of doing it. But we will need to take the lessons from those two options. We will need to understand that something in here has to change. It's normally us that has to change as entrepreneurs. That's our biggest lesson. Uh, so if we're conscious about it and if we map it, we can do it. OK, so what I did was I put together six steps. You'll notice there's a theme here for me that I like to break things down into steps because that makes things a little bit more manageable and you can take it in a little bit better. But my core message for you is one, you will not be the person, you as you are now will not be the person who takes you there, okay? However, you do not have to be the worst case scenario of the life or the person to be, to get you to where you want to go. And this is the other thing I want to say to you is, if we know that we have to change and we're resistant to that change, my question is, our dreams require our attention, okay? And if we want to bring those dreams to come true for ourselves, and if we want to achieve our purpose in life, then we must pay attention to those dreams consciously, or they will pass us by. And that is hard to hear, but if we do not do it now, then when? And if it's not us, then who? 
So with that in mind, and I bring you choice. Every time I bring you choice, you choose. And we're not living in the industrial era anymore. So we do get to choose what it looks like, but we must be present for that choice to happen. And we must understand that we will need to change. Okay. So, and I'd love to have this discussion with you. So please ask questions. So my six step recipe for scaling. Now the difference between growing and scaling is growing might be incremental growth, piece at a time, continual reinvestment, slowly, slowly, slowly. Okay. Scaling is, is jumping, sticking the jump leads in. And it's actually looking at the resources we have, getting a, an investment of capital, an investment or a jump into the business to jump to the next stage. It's about leverage. It's not always about money, but it often does require money. But it is about a jump, a significant move to scale, to move to the next level. So this is your choice. You move along slowly. And the danger with moving along slowly is it tends, in my experience, to often be a sticking point because we get into a groove where we don't necessarily grow because we keep doing the same things, just more of them. And there's a point in the business where you have to say, am I going to keep giving more, more, more of me for kind of the same results? Or do I jump at a certain point? Shall I jump? I encourage you to jump, but I encourage you to jump at a height that feels right for you, okay? You can take a high jump or you can take a medium jump. And it's to not have the limits of conventional wisdom, but to understand the learnings from the wisdom of people who've been there before you, okay? So let's kind of explore it a little bit because here are the ingredients for this. And these are the consciousness that we must need to bring to this, okay? So my first one, okay, is first is to map the path. This is actually the cornerstone of the Get, Get Strategic Get Results program, okay? And it's this idea that you take here and you understand the business that you have now, no lying to yourself, okay? The, because it's just for you, you don't have to share it with anybody, but really, really understand what is the business that I have now? What does it look like? And frame it, frame it very clearly in terms of how many customers, what level of turnover do I have? What do, um, what are the resources that I have in the business? How much time do I have? What does the business look like now? Okay. And then take a leap in your mind so that you can take the physical leap later and frame what does there look like? What does the end game look like? Now, this is really important because I want you to jump five years in the future and conventional wisdom or the things that the banks have been looking for for the last number of years have been very short term plans. There's this embracing of you can only think one year ahead, but true growth comes from the ability to see at least five years ahead because it takes you out of that operational mindset and moves you into visionary mindset. We talked about this last week. We move out of this operational mindset. We move into visionary and we start to see, we start to see what it looks like. But now at this point, because last week we did the seeing, now I want you framing it. So if you look at your business now, truly what your business looks like now, and then you look at what you want the business to look like in five years minimum. Remember Japanese people look at 20 year timelines or 200 year timelines. So in five years, what does that business look like? How many customers do you have? How many sales do you have? What's your profitability like here? And take that step, really look at that. What markets are you in? What, who are your happiest customers? Where are they? What space do you own? What does there look like for you? Okay. And we really need to see that. Now that's from here to there. But if we're mapping something, we also need to know, need to map the steps in between. And I like to do this in, and I often kind of get people to think of this as a set of stairs because life, the way it is, we don't actually grow kind of from here to there in a simple jump. We like to grow smoothly, but they usually come in levels. 
levels where we do a leap, we bed it in, we do the next leap, bed it in. So if you think of every year as a significant leap in the business, where a significant milestone, and a milestone is something that changes the game. So in every year in that five-year plan, you say to yourself, what is the one thing that will change the game this year for me? And then you take the next year. What is the one thing that will change the game next year? And you map the milestones, map them first. Each of them need to be game changers. They need to trigger something for movement to happen, okay? And also frame it in terms of sales levels. And yes, I'm talking about sales a lot here because that's the name of the game. At the end of the day, the growth is measured, measured by your financial aspect, but also what the success is you define it, which are the other things in your life. So we, but we, if you choose to have this balance in your life and to create a business that you want for yourself or for your organization, then we need to frame all aspects of it. Not only the success, because it's you know quite topical or quite um, common for everybody to be talking about work-life balance, life balance, and making sure that we choose a life that we want to live. And it's very, very important to me personally as well. But it's also really important, or we're fooling ourselves, if we don't measure that success. If we, do, if we don't measure what the business looks like financially. So in your milestones of how that business grows, anchor it with numbers. Anchor it with what are the sales levels at each point, how many customers you need at each point, how many employees or how many people do you need to help you in the growth of that business. Do it on one page. Take yourself from here to there and put anchor points at each year along that path so that you can see it most in its most simplest manner, see it on one page so that you can really truly understand the flow that needs to occur and the realization to answer this question, who am I at each point? Who am I at each point in this business to get to where I want to go? Okay, really important. And it's a nice, it's a kind of nice step to map that out like that. And what you'll often find is, and what I've seen from experience is, when people map this process, they often front load it with all the things that they need to do now because the operational focus, and perhaps because they start to really see what the future can look like, there's a lot of activity around that. And the bit in the middle, and this is very common, that middle third of the business often is empty because we don't know what it looks like. So, the trick then is to smooth the growth, smooth the map so that it's consistent and steady and growing, okay? Yes, there are leaps. Yes, there is potential for scale, but we want it as smooth as we can because when it's smooth, when we're doing it on paper, it creates the space for the unexpected, okay? We don't need to build in adversity. We just need to be prepared for it, okay? Okay. Number two in your ingredients for success is knowing the numbers, knowing the numbers and having a business model that works. So when you've gone through this step by step, nice thing on one page, you need to do the numbers. So what level of customer? So not just one number for one year, how many customers in each month do you need? And in each year, do you need to bring in in terms of number of customers, number of sales, and if you, because looking at the actual numbers that you have to deliver on and measure yourself against at the end of every month, we're coming, we're halfway through August, what will happen at the end of the month? Will you have delivered on the sales that you targeted for yourself? If you don't put in these sales targets, financial targets, understanding what the costs to the business are, where the profit is, where the loss is, where you need to resource things, then you're not really being con consciously choosing to grow the business. When you know the numbers, you know what's possible. When you know the numbers, you know what you need to change. And I'll ask you this question, okay? If all of a sudden you delivered those numbers, 
what would happen? Where would be the leakage? Because we need to make sure that the business model that we create is capable of being achieved. So if your pricing strategy doesn't fit those numbers or doesn't fit the marketplace, you have to understand those numbers so that you can deliver on them. So if all of a sudden you got 10 times that number of customers or 100 times that number of customers, what would happen? Could you deliver? Does your business model stand up? Know your numbers, okay? Number three for you in your recipe for growth or scale, okay, is making sure the product is ready to scale. So we've gone from this kind of mapping the path, then getting specific in each year and looking at the numbers because it really makes you see things when you see the numbers. And then the next question is, is your product ready to scale? Back to that thing of if 10 times the number of customers you have now or 100 times the number of customers you have now suddenly appeared and wanted to buy your product, could they? Could they buy it? I had a conversation earlier this week with somebody and we looked at and the key and the conversation started with, Fanola, how do I convert more? And I said, okay, let's poke around at this. And we really looked at this and having had that conversation, the reality was if the conversions were increased, it couldn't be delivered on. And, I, and again, I had this, I've had this conversation with small businesses that want to scale and large businesses that want to scale. And if your business is not, if your product is not ready for scale, then you're not ready for scale. So part of this growth plan and this scaling plan is to get that product or service ready for scale. If it's a service, do you have enough people to deliver on that service? Are you on your own or are you going to have somebody else to deliver on that service? Are you capable of scale? If you have a product, do you have enough production there to actually give you the, to actually sell that product to somebody? Is your product ready for scale? Never mind, ready for sale, because you have to answer that first. Is it ready for sale and is it ready for scale? And there's a point, and when that question came up earlier this week for me, we really had to look and say, and part of that conversation around, how do I convert? And I'm like, well, your product's not ready for conversion. So let's get the product ready for conversion. And that meant the business model had to fundamentally shift to make it ready for scale, okay? So you need to look at it and say, is this ready? And this requires the pivot. But remember, that pivot, that move, because the product wasn't ready for scale, meant that, you're getting, that client of mine was getting to where they needed to go faster because they were ready. And what often happens is when we're just doing simple, small steps of growth, we often, our success often creeps up on us and we're not ready for the next step. And we need to yank ourselves out of this situation, out of that pattern, because the patterns form very quickly, to actually move, to move and say, I'm ready now. I can celebrate what I've done. And now my product and what I do is proven and tested in the marketplace. It's now ready to move to the next stage. Let's do it. Scary, but let's do it. It's not just scary, it's exciting, okay? Right, next point is with a great product, you need great marketing, okay? So it's a great quote by Bill Burnback called, you can say the right thing about a product and nobody will listen. You've got to say it in a way that they feel it in their gut or nothing will happen. And this is the same for great marketing. When your product is ready, when you are ready for growth and when your product is ready for growth and ready for scale, then your marketing must be ready too. And it must be marketing that is connected to every part of your business, that stacks up with every part of your business and understands your customers deeply, really understands them understands their pain points, their challenge points, how they can best be served, and if they're the right customers in the first place. And you need great marketing to do that, okay? So, and we're on how great marketing works, so that works too, okay? Next step is, with great marketing, you also need great sales. So we do need to understand how sales and marketing 
work best together. They work best because they've got the data, they've got the language, and they've got the momentum to push hard, to convert and bring you more customers so you can serve even more people with, by fulfilling that purpose that you set for yourself at the very start. So it's not enough to just market and build brand awareness. You must sell. You must sell your products or services. You must convert. You must bring your customers along. And your customers ask that of you. They have a problem they want you to solve if you are the right person for them. And you're doing them a disservice by not selling them your stuff. Okay. One of the key ingredients for great sales, apart from the marketing input and the messaging and all of that, is really good systems, really good data to understand what works, to act at the right time, in the right moment, with the right message. Okay? So it's about process. And it's about not being afraid to ask for the sale. Okay? Next one. Who are you now? Because I said this at the start. You need to change. So who are you now? And who do you need to be at each stage in the growth of your business? And whose help do you need at each stage? Because when we scale, we realize that we can't do everything. We realize that we need more people or more resources, whether they're internal to our business or outside of our business, we need help because that allows us the freedom to lead our business forward, to move our business forward and hold that vision firmly intact and take the business there. And you need more people to help you do that. So who, what are the resources, the skills and the people that you need either? And remember, you can do this on a small level by outsourcing also, but then over time you will grow that and you will have more people to help you at key points and the key points in the business are what frees you most next that will act as a lever for growth in the business what again like your milestones what will be a game changer because it takes something off of your plate and also something that perhaps wasn't even on your plate in the first place and allows you to deliver again i ask you this other question when we create space for you as the business person who started this business, what's your role at each stage in the business? Do you become the leader in the business to forge the way forward? Are you the right person to do the leading? And if you are the person who's doing the leading, then who's doing the managing? Because you need both, okay? Think about that at each point and map it really simply. That map at the very start really helps because each of these questions dig into that map. These are your six ingredients for success, for scaling your business. There may be more and there will be more questions. Please feel free to ask them, okay? But again, I have closing thoughts that I want to share with you. Ask yourself, do you truly want this? Do you really want to grow this business, okay? Do you really want to scale this business? Truly, okay? And then think outside the box about what it would mean to achieve this. What does it look like? What does it feel like? We talked about it last week. And what help do you need for the business to grow it? What are the skill sets that you need to bring in at each point that raises the game around each of those milestones at each stage in the growth of the business? And what do you need from a mindset perspective? How are you supported personally as the leader in the business to help you grow at each stage of the business? Because the you who started this, who had this passion and this dream and this kindness or all of these things, these are not all of the skills you need to go to the next stage. You need to grow as much as your business does. How can you get the help? that okay have a wonderful day everyone this is ask finola how episode 10 grow up or scale up are you ready for change and i think you are 
Have a wonderful day.